Is there something the government isn't telling us about 9-11? With the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks just around the corner, Richard Clark, the former White House counterterrorism czar under both Presidents Bill Clinton and George W. Bush, unveiled some shocking allegations about the CIA in a soon-to-be-released radio documentary. Clark alleges that the Bush administration's CIA, under the leadership of George Tenet, purposefully withheld information about the 9-11 hijackers from both the White House and uh, from the White House, both before and after the terrorist attacks. Clark claims the CIA not only knew the whereabouts of two 9-11 hijackers, but actually tried to recruit them prior to the attacks and kept the White House in the dark about it after the recruitment efforts failed. But this bombshell contradicts what Clark said in 2004 about George Tenet and the CIA. George Tenet mm -hmm. was saying to the White House, saying to the president, because he briefed him every morning, mm -hmm. uh, a major al-Qaeda attack is going to happen against the United States somewhere in the world in the weeks and months ahead. He said that in June, July, August. So what's behind Clark's new take on 9-11, and could it be true? For more on this, I'm joined by Phil Shannon, investigative reporter for Newsweek and the Daily Beast, as well as the author of the book, The Commission, The Uncensored History of the 9-11 investigation. Phil, welcome. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here with us. Um, first of all, Clark's latest allegation, your, your take on this. Is well, this we should say the latest. He actually said this in 2009, and these documentarians have been sitting on this information for two years. Wow. But Clark gave an interview in 2009 in which he said that after many years of thought on the subject, he'd come to the conclusion that, that the CIA probably tried to recruit two hijackers who were living in the United States beginning in 2000 and hid that information from the FBI and the White House because it wanted to try to recruit those guys. And after the recruitment effort, effort went sour, it continued to withhold the information because it was essentially so embarrassed by it and would be accused of malfeasance if it fessed up. Wow. That, that certainly would not be the first time that a government agency had covered something up because of embarrassment. Not at all. Right? Not at all. Very human um, characteristic. I'm curious why, you know, you've really dug into this stuff. Why did George W. Bush ignore the CIA briefer who flew down to Crawford? I mean, they sent a special guy down to Crawford to deliver that famous memo that Condi Rice finally had to blurt the name out of before Congress, you know, bin Laden determined to strike inside the United States. And then after he got the memo, he was scheduled to go back to D.C., but instead he extended his vacation for a couple weeks. Nothing happened. And then he went, the longest presidential vacation in history, back to George Washington. And then he went to his brother's state of Florida rather than going back to D.C., and uh, Jeb locked down the entire state. It makes one wonder if Bush was just like waiting for something awful to happen, maybe didn't know what it was. I'm not trying to play, you know, 9-11 uh, uh, conspiracy theorist here, but um, what was going on with that? Well, I think all the investigations have shown, from the 9-11 the Commission, the congressional investigations, there have been a lot of investigations of this, is that the Bush administration just, terrorism wasn't their thing. It wasn't their subject prior to 9-11. It just wasn't what interested uh, George Bush and Condi Rice. And, uh, and, and it did interest people like George Tennant and Dick Clark, who was at the White House, who was supposedly giving uh, the expertise needed on terrorism. Their, their, inf their information, their warnings just weren't heeded until 9-11. But I interviewed Sandy Berger. Sandy Berger was the outgoing um, national security national advisor. Security right. advisor yeah. and, and he told me that he had told uh, was it Condi Rice? Who was right. Con you know the incoming right. national security advisor? Um, your, your number one priority is going to be 9/11. Is, is going to be the Al Qaeda, right. and they are going to attack us here right. in the United States. And that he had personal knowledge that Al Gore had said the same thing to Dick Cheney, mm -hmm. and that Bill Clinton had said the same thing to George Bush, right. and that they had heard the message, and that they all appeared to have taken it seriously. Um, did, is it literally that they just, I, you know, I know that Dick Cheney was put in charge of the counterterrorism task force in March and they didn't even meet until September. Mm -hmm. Was that really just because they're saying this isn't our thing? I mean, you're, you know, Israel was telling us the attacks were coming. London was telling us the attacks were coming. Russia was, I mean... I think if, How you, could they if, do you, that? if you go back and look at the performance of the first year of the, of the Bush White House, it just seems that they were much more concerned about Iraq and getting Iran. The, you know, the axis of evil, the axis of evil that George Bush talked about in that first year, that didn't include Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda. Right. Uh, they were focused on these nation states that posed a risk. They just couldn't quite get their, their heads around the idea that this group 
they thought sitting in a cave in Afghanistan could pose much of a, of a threat. And history shows that they were, you know, horrifically wrong about that. Do you think that the 9-11 Commission did a competent job? I think they got a lot of questions answered. I think they missed a tremendous amount as well. And I think there were some uh, really remarkable conflicts of interest uh, that faced the people who were running the investigation that were only acknowledged after the investigation ran out. We've learned now, I mean, in the historical record, that the Warren Commission, that the reason why Earl Warren had tears running down his face when he walked in that photo with LBJ when he was asked, you know, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, to head up this commission, the reason why he was sobbing was because he had just been told that, that uh, they were pretty certain that Fidel Castro had killed Kennedy and that if the American people found out about it, there would be such an outcry for an uh, invasion of Cuba that it would certainly provoke World War III. And so they were going to have to basically do this investigation in a way that did not point to that, to, to the conclusion that they'd already arrived at. Um, you may know more than I do. Yeah. But I think Earl Warren... But, Earl... but, but, but the, 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 you know, I, I'm not saying that for the record. I'm saying that as a setup for the question. Is there, was there a similar narrative that, that might have run through the 9-11 Commission? Had they, had they established uh, any kind of presuppositions before they went into it that they were looking to prove rather than simply trying to find the evidence? I think, or anything that they were trying to conceal for that matter. I think they can certainly be criticized for having gone into this investigation with the mindset that they were going to hold no people, human beings, accountable for what had gone wrong. Even though all of the evidence in front of them showed that some human beings had made terrible errors and should be held accountable and should be punished. Right. And I think that mindset, I think to this day, um, it, it's a real failing that to this day nobody has ever been disciplined or fired uh, for what went so terribly wrong in the government prior to 9-11. Right. And, and for that matter, the, the Bush administration, I find it astounding that the Bush administration not only escaped responsibility for it happening on their watch, but right. basically has bragged about the fact that... Uh, that it happened on their watch. I, I don't it's, get it. it. It is perverse in many ways, but that yeah. is the, that is it's, the case. It's, it's very interesting. Um, Phil, thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. Thank I you. I appreciate you dropping by. Great meeting. There's still a lot of unanswered questions out there about 9-11.